live above the fear of dying. Right. Because almost in his mind, I'm already dead. I've lost everything. Nothing else matters. And he's able to find himself, even in that one moment, animated above the fear of death. And that, that's not, that, that, that can't be sustained long term, but it gives us a picture right. uh, of what can happen once a person thinks like that. You know, Paul said, we're already dead. See, we're, it's difficult because we're, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. That's right. But we're all, we all function from the place as if there is life to be found in this world. Yeah. But Paul comes and says, no, we're already dead, man. Now, you can't work that out of yourself and begin to think that way. But what happens is as you hear the message of life, you'll find the message of life in you thinking that way. Yeah. That this life I was so afraid of losing, you'll begin to see that it actually isn't life at all. That you're already dead to that life. That'd be like Jesus being afraid to die, right? Yeah. Jesus isn't afraid to die, nor did he think about his mortal body perishing as being uh, his death in the sense of he would no longer exist. Yeah. He knew that he would conquer that death. Yeah. He had the view of it. But I love what, what one said about faith because faith would be another acronym for the law of God. And if we understood faith that way, it would make much more sense and we could see it much more as the faith. Right. And that's why Paul said in Romans, do we make void the law through faith? Nay. What does he say? We're establishing the law through faith. Same thing Jesus basically said when he talked about fulfilling the law. Yeah. Think not that I've come to destroy the law. I've come to reveal the law for what it actually is. So Paul says the same thing in Romans. He says, do we make the law void through faith? No. We establish what the law of God actually is. It's called the faith that was made flesh in Jesus. That is the law of God. Yeah. So if you want to do righteousness, what do you do? You believe on the faith that came in the person of Jesus. What does that faith say? That faith said that God removed your sin from you as far as the east is from the west. Yeah. Though your sin was red as crimson, causing death to reign over you, he came and made it white as snow. Amen. Meaning that he came and took your death, swallowed it up with glory and immortality, and revealed that to you for you to believe on. Hey. That's what the faith of God says. That's what the law of God says. And that faith, when it comes to a person, it begins to persuade their heart. Amen. And they begin to think like Glenn was just thinking. That's right. Right. about immortality yeah. how can there be lack if i possess immortality there can't be how can there how can death corrupt my life if i'm already dead mm -hmm. it can't right yeah. and so once faith comes to you you begin to find faith doing something to you and you begin to think like that and that's why it's so important for people to get their eyes off of the law of moses as if it was the law of god yes. or to get their eyes off of anything that they think the commandment is that is anything other than abide in Jesus for eternal life. Right. Period. Yeah. That's the extent of the commandment. Right. I don't care how good it sounds. Brother, we've been commanded to be kind. Nope. <laughs> Brother, we've been. Nope. No, we haven't. We've been commanded to abide in this truth. Right. And that truth tells me that I can't be kind. That truth tells me I don't possess the ability to love and to be kind and to have peace and to have joy. That truth tells me the only way I can find love pouring out of me is if I abide in the Father. Yes. So don't come and tell me now that there's a new commandment and it, it's what I'm going to do now to love people. No, no, no. It's what I'm going to do now to let God give birth to love in me apart from my works. Right. That's what the new commandment is. Yeah. It's what, 